Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, thanks for taking the time to uh, join us this uh, this Monday. Um, so I'm. Uh, uh, we are going to talk uh, about a webinar today for the Laugard M52 OD Best Use Practice Guide. The session is being recorded and will be shared after the webinar. Um, questions can be posted in our Q and A. Uh, chat there and will be answered after the webinar is done if time permits. Um, our webinar will be uh, will be being be led by Dr. Matthew Kraus. Uh, he is a Lalamon's field solution director for covered crops uh, and I will pass it on to Matthew now. Thank you. Thank you Scott. Um, I'll go right to the uh, to the presentation here. So Lalgard M52OD, some of you might recall it being called uh, MET52 in the past, MET52ES, um, or EC rather, um, uh, since since uh, a few years ago, Lalamont took on Lalgard M52OD. Um, that's our, our new name for it. Um, it is a, an oil dispersion for foliar applications, but also for soil drench. It contains the active ingredient Metarizium bruneum F52. It is at least two times 10 to the nine colony forming units per mil concentration. And at uh, 20 degrees uh, Celsius or less, it has, uh, or, or it has a 12 month shelf life. And at uh, four degrees Celsius, it's uh, 24 months. Um, it does come in one liter packages. It's the main pests that we focus on are whitefly, thrips, mite, and aphids. Um, the crops that it's registered for in Canada are greenhouse vegetables, ornamentals, cannabis, and turf. It does have a four hour restricted entry interval as well as a zero day pre-harvest interval. It is eco-friendly and safer for workers, but not OMRI listed uh, for organic use. And that's due to one of the inert ingredients in the formulation. Nice little video here to describe the mode of action here that, that's taking place. So first, when the product is sprayed, it's sprayed to wet or glisten inside the droplets you'll see there, um, hitting the, the uh, blossom there with thrips, um, nymphs on there. And the uh, spores then attach to the, or land on the insect, germinate and grow inside the insect. That's what this fungus does very well. And as it does so, it continues to grow inside the insect. And as it uh, um, continues to grow there, it causes a mycosis, which is a fungal infection that literally eats the insect from the inside out. Um, notice that there are no white fuzzy spores or growth on the outside because that's normally not what you will see when you use the product. So when we are um, recommending this product for use on, on these crops, this is actually um, a view of, um, of a part of the label there. Um, our main recommendations for foliar application are one and a half liters per thousand liters or 0.15% by volume. We do not really recommend going above that concentration for two reasons. One, because that we don't see that there is that great of an effect beyond that, that you will actually achieve a very good um, efficacy um, for suppressing these insect populations um, at that rate. And especially if you're going to be applying it weekly or in a weekly uh, rotation with other uh, entomopathic into the pathogenic um, fungal products like Biocerus or Botanigard. Um, and then the other reason is it does contain an oil in the formulation. And what we don't want is an accumulation of oil on uh, plant surfaces there um, with repeated applications. So really focus um, on using it no more than one and a half liters per thousand when you do use it um, as a soil drench we would recommend about 100 mils for every 10 liters of, um, of drench uh, suspension. And that's about 240, 250 milliliters per, per um, um, 
five liter, four or five liter pot. Um, the product can be used uh, preventively. And of course we, we recommend using it before you have a, a, a problem, uh, before you actually see a massive explosion of fly fly or thrips, aphids or spider mites. Um, so that's really using it as a preventive spray to hit the small populations that are typically on greenhouse crops. Um, very early in the crop season. Um, during the actual season there, using it in rotation with other effective uh, materials, either, either chemical or, or biological. And of course, if you're using um, beneficial insects, macro beneficials, it's important to um, um, make the applications um, in a compatible way. And I'll talk about that here in a moment. Um, and then of course, around harvest, um, when, if you uh, happen to be using uh, chemical insecticides in your program, um, usually there's a pre-harvest interval that could be several days, and this is actually a great opportunity to um, use Logard N52OD um, to, uh, during that period um, when you can't use the chemical. But again, focusing on one and a half liters per thousand and not going above that. So this is just a, a video here to give you an example of, of what, um, how easily the product is mixed in water. Even though it's an oil-based formulation, we have um, active, or excuse me, inactive ingredients in there that actually make the active ingredient easier to disperse in a liquid. And so very easy to, to mix, and that would be at, at, a, at a rate not very uh, far off of what um, we would recommend as the concentration. So when we take that suspension of spores and we put it on a special microscope slide called a hematometer, we look at it underneath the microscope, and those uh, circles that you see there are globules of the oil with spores inside of them. So that oil helps the canidia to stick to the insect cuticle and protect the spores from ultraviolet light and desiccation, and can also enhance the, the persistence and water fastness on insects. That's especially important um, during uh, um, periods of, of heavy moisture. Regarding mixing, um, we recommend shaking the the container well before using. Um, our, again, our recommended concentration for foliar applications is one and a half liters per thousand liters or 0.15% by volume. If you're going to be drenching it, um, then it would be soil, uh, the, the soil substrate or growing mix um, rate would be 108 milliliters per 10 liters drenched on the crop. We recommend at first mixing the M52 in one third to one half of the spot final spray volume to get it fully mixed and then add the remaining water volume uh, to, to bring it up to the final dilution. We recommend using uh, in sprayers um, where you don't have vortexing um, that uh, can occur at a very high rate uh, when it is being agitated. Um, or recirculated in your spray tanks because that will actually inhibit good mixing of the product. So if you have a sprayer that does uh, a really nice uh, um, heavy vortex in there, it might be necessary to put baffles in the tank or to find some way of slowing down that, uh, that um, um, recirculation rate. Um, we do recommend that it stays agitated or agitate constantly throughout the application because there are spores that are heavier than water and they will settle out, out and you won't get an even distribution um, uh, among, on your crop. Um, we also recommend using it within six hours of mixing because these are live spores and once we add water to them, that kind of reanimates them. And so they already become metabolically active. And unless they come in contact with, uh, with an insect um, uh, in order to germinate, et cetera, they will probably starve and, uh, and die and therefore be less effective. So really use it within six hours of mixing if you can. We also recommend using the entire contents of the bottle once opened. We're currently evaluating storage life of, of the opened and resealed bottles if they're stored at four degrees Celsius. 
but for now, we, we recommend using the entire contents of the bottle um, once it's been opened. When doing um, foliar applications, we would suggest applying through standard hydraulic and low volume sprayers on all aerial plant surfaces using a fine droplet size or smaller. And the reason for that is you get a much better distribution of spores. Since the spores are solid, they don't go systemic into the plant, and they also don't spread over the surface of the plant. And quite frankly, we're trying to hit the insect and really not the leaves or the, the blossoms. We're trying to hit the insects on those um, leaves or blossoms. So we kind of use the plant as an indicator of, of how well we sprayed um, when we're using hydraulic sprayers. For drenching, we recommend um, drenching 250 mils of the suspension uh, per four liters of, of container or growing medium, um, and then obtain an even coverage over that soil surface. We also don't recommend applying it through a drip irrigation system. Um, sprayer drench suspensions can pass through screens and filters um, uh, that are greater than 120 mesh size or 125 microns because the spores are rather small. We recommend also applying between 15 and 35 degrees Celsius or 59 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit um, with uh, greater than uh, or equal to 50% relative humidity in and around the plant canopy. So that's really um, targeting it right uh, in, in and around the, the, the plant canopy and not really um, the, the humidity and heat conditions um, between rows where you don't have plant material. And of course, a spray pressure less than 200 PSI or 14 bar, although we're evaluating right now also to see if the M52 spores can tolerate higher pressures. For best results when doing foliar sprays, use a fine droplet size or smaller, so that gives you a better distribution, as I mentioned before. Begin applying when the pest levels are low and then look at applying at five to 10 day application intervals um, thereafter or in rotation with effective compatible bioinsecticides or synthetic insecticides. Um, we highly recommend rotating with an effective uh, wettable powder or wettable granule bioinsecticide, uh, mainly because we wanna break up the oil cycle and that we don't wanna build up any oil residues. And when you follow too many um, applications of oil-based products, you can cause some issues uh, on the plant um, with uh, stomates opening and closing or hydathodes at the edges of the leaves becoming blocked. So we kind of want to avoid that. Of course, talk, target all aerial plant surfaces where the pest is prevalent, especially inside the canopy. The object is for, as I mentioned before, is to is for those spores to hit the insect pest or the, the mite pest on the plant, not the plant itself. So in that, we recommend spraying to wet or glisten, not to runoff. Runoff will actually in, uh, be equivalent to an ineffective application and wasted product. If it's running off the leaf, it's probably running off of the insect. So what we wanna do again is make sure that those spores stick to the insect. And then only apply when the spray droplets can dry and evaporate within one to two hours after application. That's critical because it, like I said, it does contain an oil and there are the benefits of having that oil in the formulation far outweigh the negatives, but we have to be concerned about uh, those oil droplets drying down and, and not being um, um, uh, wet for, for hours at a time because that can soften the plant cuticle and also uh, um, become damaging to the plant. So some precautions we really need to be mindful of here. First, do not apply through thermal foggers. We are currently evaluating the application of uh, Lalgard N52 OD through the biopulse fog and similar types of, of um, thermal foggers where the heating is uh, decoupled from the system. Um, and when, once we know, uh, once we have results there, we can share those and then update our label to accommodate. We also recommend um, spraying on a small number of plants first, up to three sprays to test for potential injury. 
before applying to the entire vegetable or ornamental crop variety that you're working with. We do know that um, for plants that have vapor pressure deficit issues, um, there are some varieties of cherry tomato, for instance, that it's always good to, to do a test run or a few test runs to see if you have any injury on a smaller number of plants before you proceed any further. The same is true for some uh, varieties of, of uh, floricultural crops, of flowers in, in particular. So, um, just test small areas before before going all out. Um, then, of course, as I mentioned before, we recommend rotating with a WP um, type of formulation of uh, of another um, uh, bioinsecticide, um, maybe every second or third application in rotation, and that again prevents oil accumulation around the stomates. We also um, highly recommend not applying when you have uh, direct overhead sun. Um, and this will help prevent sun scald. Again, the oil acts as a little magnifying glass and can actually burn the plants, um, if it, especially if it doesn't dry down quickly enough. Um, but again, it, it's uh, as with any other oil-based product, that's something you want to avoid. Um, do not overheat during spraying or apply to hot surfaces around the target application zone. So that's in and around the canopy. You wanna make sure that, that um, the air temperature isn't too high or that you don't have equipment there that could be generating heat that could cause the droplets to, to uh, vaporize or sublimate and, and injure the plant. Um, we also don't recommend uh, applying to stressed plants, especially during periods of drought stress, heat stress, or when plants exhibit moisture stress or edema, that's too much water. Um, and that that's, goes true for any oil-based product. Another that goes true for any oil-based product, including M52OD, is to not apply to crops treated recently with sulfur. And these could be from sulfur pots or from fungicide sprays that contain sulfur. So um, it is okay to apply M52 before you do sulfur applications, once it's dried down to the surface, but not after because that, that could uh, result in plant injury because of the sulfur being in, in greater contact with the plant. And then avoid applications when pollinators are foraging. Even though M52OD is compatible with pollinators like bumblebees, um, we recommend um, that, that um, you do the applications of M52 um, um, before um, um, the uh, pollinators are out foraging or after they've gone in for the evening or afternoon. And apply at least one day prior to releases of macro beneficial, simply because we want to make sure that that even for those where it's compatible, that the oil in the formulation doesn't have any type of a of a uh, an effect on negative effect on the, the macro beneficials that would slow them down or make them less effective. When it comes to compatibility, we do know that M52OD is compatible in rotation with, with other chemical and biological pesticides, but currently do not tank mix with other insecticides or fungicides. Um, we're currently investigating tank mix uh, possibilities with uh, the top fungicides and insecticides and even growth regulators and, and adjuvants. But at, uh, at the moment, we're not uh, um, we're cautioning uh, growers to not apply um, in a tank mix with other products. Um, we do have compatibility tables uh, for rotational and, comp and uh, program compatibility information that uh, will be launched soon. Um, when compatibility information is not available, we recommend applying Logard M52 at least seven days after the other product is applied. And that uh, gives us uh, a nice safe margin um, for, uh, for safety for the M52 product. Um, we do know that um, when it's put into weekly applications or rotations with chemical and other biopesticides that um, new pest generations um, on new and old, old surfaces, um, you know, new tissue for instance, are, are, can be reduced. And that's really an effective way of of applying all of these products so that you're hitting the new tissue. 
um, that horticultural oils can be used to knock down high pest populations before you do M52 OD sprays. But again, you want to watch the accumulation of oils on the, those leaf surfaces. M52 is, is quite nice in that it is compatible with many beneficial insects and predatory mites. Um, and therefore you can actually exploit that compatibility. And as I mentioned, we have updated compatibility information coming out later this year. Um, even when there are um, incompatible um, interactions with beneficials, those are only temporary, unlike many chemical insecticide treatments, which may have um, residues that, that persist. So it's possible to, um, when, when you, the uh, Logard M52 is incompatible, to apply Logard M52 one or more days prior to releases or remove or cover banker plants during those applications that you're making. And of course, we recommend targeting M52 OD sprays at the canopy and not the ground or the floor. And that will also protect some of those uh, beneficials that you have um, that are emerging from the, the plant tissue that's been removed and left as crop residue uh, between rows. Um, in vegetable operations. Um, as I mentioned before, do not apply log garden 52 when pollinators are actively foraging. Um, but something that's, uh, that's really nice about M52 is that it works quite nicely during cooler and hotter months when the beneficials are less active. So um, th there are some, some additional benefits that go beyond its, its normal compatibilities with, um, with macro beneficials. And this just kind of gives you an example, I won't go into detail on this, but an example of the, of the uh, macro beneficials that um, Logard M52 OD is compatible with. And with that, um, I thank you and Scott and I thank you for your attention and would welcome any questions you might have. Thank you, Matthew. Um, yeah, there's quite a few questions that came in uh, while you were talking, so I'm just gonna go over some that uh, for you to answer. So uh, Jean-Paul asked, uh, is, there a, is there a recommended spray adjuvant uh, that could be used to extend the effectiveness of the product? Something like glycol or organosilicon or something like that? No, not really. It's um, what we're trying to do is to get it on the insect and we don't need it to hang around. What we need to do is to get it on the insect because it will germinate rather quickly on the insect. So um, we have already know that the formulation as it is now doesn't really need a surfactant because it spreads, the oil spreads very nicely. We get very nice droplet size. And so um, there shouldn't be any need for it. Um, um, and, and actually using an organosilicone may actually draw the, the droplets inside the plant. And that's where we don't want it. We want it uh, really on the insect pest. I hope that answers your question. Uh, Emma has a question. Is it effective on the Mesia tabaki, including the Q strain, so the silver leaf uh, white fly? Yes, yes. Uh, we also have, oh yeah, uh, Matthew uh, asks, what type of thrips uh, does this product control? Um, it's, it will uh, control Western flower thrips. So it'll suppress Western flower thrips, for instance. Um, but we're, the jury is still out right now on thrips parvispinus. We're doing uh, tests on it um, as we speak. So um, stick, stick around with us later this year. We should know something about thrips parvispinus. A couple more questions. Chili yeah, go ahead. Um, is there a maximum amount of applications per crop? Logard M52. There is no maximum amount of applications um, on the Canadian label, um, but we still recommend breaking up the cycle, rotating it with other with other products. So. Um, the, one of the reasons why you do weekly applications of any of these products, any of these um, um, bioinsecticides, is because you have to hit the new tissue.
So um, because they don't spread, um, they don't uh, the spores don't jump. We don't get uh, production of spores from the insect that then blow around the greenhouse, etc. You really need to be um, hitting it, um, the, the new tissue every week, and we recommend using it in rotation with other um, with other um, bioinsecticides like like Bioceris or Botanigard or Mycotrol, especially the WP formulations, so that you have a, a better margin for plant safety overall. In addition to that, during the warmer months, you actually have more generations of uh, insects and mites that uh, that you may have in your greenhouse um, if the pressure continues to increase. So therefore, it's also good to have these different modes of actions all in play. So no, there's not not really a set number of applications per crop or per per um, growing area per year, but um, like I said, you would want to rotate it, you know, every two or three applications with something else. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, I think we have a yeah another minute to get a, maybe another question in there. Um, what is the compatibility with micro microscopic sulfur? Millstop and other fungicides. So, um, so sulfur, we wouldn't recommend applying it with sulfur. Um, if they, you are doing a sulfur application afterwards, it should be fine. It, it would be compatible, but the but it's not compatible um, from the from the plant um, safety side to be doing a sulfur application followed by. A uh, an M52 OD application. So um, regarding millstop, if you're using the the preventive rates of millstop, um, not a problem. You can have that out, and um, and it shouldn't uh, have a negative effect on the M52 granule or excuse me M52 OD when you do the application of the uh, of the millstop. Thank you. Uh, well, it's 1130 now, um, so I'm going to wrap up this webinar. So that's a wrap. Uh, if you if you have any additional questions, um, and I'll make sure to, to copy these questions and, and reply to you individually um, with the questions that I wasn't able to get on uh, ask. Um, but if you have any other additional questions, uh, please feel free to contact us either me specifically, or you can go through support at lalamonplantcare.com. Um, you can also call us at toll-free at 1-888-236-7378. And again, thank you for taking this time to join us. Um, and I hope everyone has a great Monday. Thank you, everybody.